my name is Christy Horan. I was an MBA dancer for six years for the Washington Wizards Dancers. And now I'm the CEO of MCG Dance and Fitness. And what that means is I'm a fitness instructor, a dancer, and a choreographer, and an entrepreneur. So I wanna talk a little bit about my journey to become an MBA dancer today. Um, I'm assuming if you're watching this, then you either are currently auditioning to be a pro dancer or cheerleader, or you want to in the future. So I started playing with the idea of becoming a professional dancer when I was in college. I went to the University of Kentucky and danced on the University of Kentucky dance team for four years. Um, my, I almost said rookie year, but my freshman year, I was starting to look at NBA teams and I decided that after I graduated college, I definitely wanted to audition to become an NBA dancer. I've danced my entire life since I was three years old, um, both for studios and for dance teams um, throughout my high school and college years. So while I you know, decided that I wanted to become an MBA dancer my freshman year of college, I didn't actually start like pursuing that until after I graduated college. Um, like I said, I went to the University of Kentucky danced on the dance team for four years, attended UDA Nationals in Orlando, and really got a firm and really good dance and performance base at the University of Kentucky. So we were really strong in palm and hip hop. We also did some jazz, um, but it was very similar to what you would see on the football field or um, a basketball court for a professional team. So I learned how to do hip hop tricks while I was in college, including a kip up, a head spring, and a rubber band. If you are subscribed to my channel for, or have watched my how-to videos, um, I'm not surprised they are totally viral. So if you haven't, go check those out. Um, so I learned all these really amazing skills that were going to contribute to standing out at professional dance team auditions. My dog Prince is sitting right here next to me. <laughs> um, so while I was a senior in college, my coach took us, me and the other captains on the squad to pro action dance where we got to dance with professional dancers firsthand close up, learn from choreographers in the professional dance industry and perform with professional dancers. It was one of the coolest things I think that I experienced as a college dancer and I am so grateful to my coach for exposing us to that professional world. That had a huge impact on deciding which team I wanted to go audition for and um, kind of what the style was and I also learned a lot as a senior in college at Pro Action Dance. So one of the first things they said to me at Pro Action Dance, again, this was like the year before my senior year of college, so I had a whole year to really get laser focused and prepare for auditions, which is exactly what I did. So I started preparing a year in advance. Um, they told us to research the teams that we were looking at. So um, there are definitely personalities and brands with each team, both in the NBA and NFL. Everybody's different, just like content creators and influencers on social media. So I did my research and I decided that I really liked the East Coast teams. So the teams that I were looking at, are, I was looking at were the Washington Wizards, the Brooklyn Nets, the New York City Knicks dancers, and um, and the Sixers, all up and down the East Coast. So um, I started doing my research on those and I decided that I really liked the Brooklyn Nets and I wanted to train um, specifically for them. So I did a lot of Facebook stalking. Um, I followed the girls on Instagram. This was back in 2014, by the way. Um, I followed all the dancers on Instagram. I followed the coach. Um, I attended clinics, uh, that was later on down the road, but I was really absorbing myself in that style and doing the research. That's not to say that I wasn't looking at other teams as well. I was looking at all the teams I just listed off, 
but I really focused my attention on that team specifically. So I, after I decided that that's kind of what I wanted to look at, I started preparing my body for auditions. So it's no secret <laughs> that um, as a dancer, you are an athlete and that means that you have to treat your body like you are one as well. So I started eating a lot healthier. Um, I started to go to the gym more consistently. I started to work out and do workouts that I noticed that other dancers were doing or that had a uh, transformation on my body that I liked. So I really got laser focused on making sure that, um, you know, your body is a temple and you, that you treat it right. That's not to say that I didn't have fun my senior year of college, I definitely did. But I also was, like I said, laser focused on um, having the judges say yes to me. Okay, so I was getting my body ready, I was eating healthier, I was going to the gym, this is my senior year of college again, and I was dancing all the time because I was already on a dance team, and that I think really prepared me for auditions. Um, why do I say that? So my college dance team, um, my coach is Dawn Walters, and she's my mentor to this day, and she still prepares the girls for going professionally and having such like a, a, a wonderful um, dance team. So that means um, making sure that you bring all your stuff to games or you know, you will be sat out. That like you're making sure that your hair and your makeup and your glam look great. Making sure that your bra is tucked in when you're dancing. Um, what else? Making sure that you're on time. We got in trouble. We were sitting on the floor before practice chatting. Like it was time to go. Um, making sure that we turned in everything. That we followed directions. And again, that we were on time. So all of these things at the at the time we just you know, I was just doing because they I was just following the rules and trying to be a good teammate. But all of those things that were required of me on my college dance team made such a huge impact and really helped me be prepared for professional dance team auditions as well. Um, so that's those are the ways that I prepared myself. I did my research, I started getting my fitness and my health ready. Um, I was working out, I was visualizing myself on the team, I was surrounding my Instagram, my social media, uh, making dream boards, like basically just like getting myself ready in that year prior to move into my dreams and what my goals were. Like I said, laser focus. So um, I'm gonna list those things off again because those are my buckets for success. So again, it's do your research, your mindset, that includes visualization, um, your lifestyle, which includes diet and fitness, um, dance training, and then also your glam. So fast forward to graduating, I actually got a job working in Baltimore, Maryland for a dance choreography company. And one of the reasons I wanted to work for the stance choreography company is one, I wanted, I'm also a choreographer, so I wanted to learn more about choreography. But um, as dancers, they had agreed to let me audition for as many teams as I wanted. Because ultimately, my goal after, <laughs> after graduating college was to be on an NBA dance team. I already knew I had a degree and I could get a job, um, or I felt confident that I could which it all worked out, so it's fine. Um, so that was my number one goal and that's what I wanted to focus on that summer after graduation. Um, speaking of graduation, so I fortunately had graduation um, money to spend on traveling and all these auditions. I will warn you, dance team auditions get very pricey. I am talking in the like, couple thousand dollars between I know I know so if you if this is something that you want make sure that you start saving up um, what is included in that money it's your dance team training if you need to get your hair done if you need to get your makeup done definitely your outfits travel costs registration costs if you do privates or training with a coach it definitely adds up so make sure that you are either setting a budget for yourself going into dance team auditions or putting money away the year prior to audition for a team. Okay, so I ended up auditioning for three teams this summer before I made the Washington Wizards. 
Um, I auditioned for the Sixers, the Nets, and then the Wizards. And it all worked out perfectly, I will say. So um, let's start with audition number one, which was the Sixers. Um, I traveled to Philly from Baltimore. I took the day off from work. And okay, so again, I wanna go back to the time. Right now it's 2021. This was back in 2014. I was 21 years old and I recently graduated college. So I was very young fearless, a little naive, which I think all helped me achieve my goals. <laughs> and I was laser focused, let's be honest. So when I went to um, the, the Sixers auditions, I got my hair done the day of open auditions. I do not recommend doing that because you, <laughs> if you get a dramatic difference like I did, I had not what I have right now. I had brunette hair with some highlights and then I went to a severe ombre. So I had really dark roots and then I had bleached blonde ends, which was, that was in style at the time. So you might be thinking I'm crazy, but that severe ombre was in style was in style at the time. Um, if you get a drastic, drastic change like that to your hair, you will kind of be shocked and need a few days to you know, get used to it and feel confident in it. I had a couple of hours. Um, so I don't recommend doing that. However, that's just how it went down. So I stayed at my um, aunt's house. I got ready, put on my makeup, put on my outfit, and then went to auditions. The line was, this was at Wells Fargo in, um, in Philly. The line was out the door. I had in my hand, I don't think I had to, sub I definitely did not have to submit a resume or headshot for that one. Um, so I just showed up with my dance stuff, checked in, Follow the line around. I'm gonna kind of um, brush through this audition um, because spoiler alert, I did not make it. So, <laughs> which is okay. This is another reason I wanted to do this video is because I work with a lot of dancers. One of um, one of the, the things I specialize in is performance power performance training for dancers who are preparing to go to um, either college dance team auditions or professional dance team auditions. And um, that's something that, that I definitely felt for my dancers if this, they get really discouraged if they don't make a team. And I feel like people don't talk about that enough. So I made one team, it was my third audition, but I auditioned for several teams before. So, and I hear this from a lot of dancers. If you're familiar with Megan Roop uh, from the Sculpt Society, she auditioned for the Nets three times. There are a couple other dancers, Maisie from Boston. Um, she auditioned for the Celtics two, three times and made it her third time. So not everybody makes it their first time. My best friend Liz auditioned for the Wizards two times. So you gotta keep coming back. You gotta stay resilient and you gotta stay consistent in your training. Okay, back to the story. Um, we ended up auditioning in the concourse of Wells Fargo. So it was definitely very cramped. We couldn't really see very well, but you just had to make it work. I ended up making it to semifinals, so I was able to come back the second day. So it was a, um, my experience was two days. The second day was um, semifinals to final auditions. So while I was auditioning, um, I remember nailing the dance. Like I did the dance perfectly. I hit all the choreography. I felt really strong in my performance and I didn't get called back for the final audition. I never asked for feedback from that team, um, but I, d I knew that they were looking for a specific type of dancer. So that's something also that happens during these auditions are you might be typecast. So they might be looking for um, somebody who's really tall or a redhead or um, a dancer who has this specific background. You never know what the team is looking for. Most teams are made up of individuals that look different, that give something different to the team to make up a whole. So um, I also know that some of the dancers that I was auditioning with and the group that I was in completely forgot the dance and just stood there. However, I still was dancing so um, and they moved on to final auditions. So this was another, 
that honestly, like after that experience, I was like, okay, like I'm officially a professional dancer because I got my first no. And I was super excited about that driving back home to DC. I was exhausted, but I was excited that one, I went to the NBA dance team audition. I was 21 years old again, and I was just extremely proud of myself. And then number two, I was like, you know, I made it to semifinals. That's awesome. And I have the like a couple other auditions that I'm going to audition, uh, try out for. So let's keep moving full steam ahead. Let's do this. Plus, like I said, if you remember that I, while I was doing um, training my senior year of college, I was really focused on the Brooklyn Nets. So it was kind of like I was ready to audition for the Nets next. And I was really glad that I had that practice under my belt. This is why I recommend to my dancers that I train that they are going to clinics, that they put themselves in uncomfortable audition um, situations or, or experiences so that you get used to auditioning. Auditioning is way different than taking a class. There's a pressure and um, endorphins that you feel that you normally don't feel. So auditioning and having a great audition is definitely something that comes with experience. And the more experience you have, the more confidence you get and grow. Okay, so next audition was two weeks later and that was the Brooklyn Nets audition. I was super excited. Obviously, this is the team that I was like really excited for. And Prince, this is the team I was super excited for and I was super nervous. And um, honestly, I don't remember too much from the audition. Like I, I think I remember more from the Sixers. I was a little bit like they're like more relaxed, the Brooklyn Nets auditions. I definitely remember being challenged, loved every single part of it, and I remember being like starstruck by the dancers. Like I, I remember feeling like, oh, um, I'm not good enough to make the team. Like it's kind of like I remember feeling that. And I think that that mentality has a huge, huge part of the reason why I didn't make the team. Um, and then there was also probably stylistic choices and I wasn't from the area. So I don't know, some, some things I feel like plays a part of that. But for the most part, I think I felt like they were at a level that I wasn't at. And I definitely think that mindset, even though I had been doing my research and, and visualizing all year when I got there and I was in that I am less than mindset, I, I, it did not help me at all. So again, I, I made it to semifinals for the Nets. Um, they are located in New York, so they have some of the best choreographers come in who are in the commercial industry, as um, who've worked with artists. And it's, it's just, it's a cool atmosphere, but it's also very intimidating. So um, I left and I got cut this third day, I believe. Was it the second or the third day? I don't remember. It was the day, I think it was the second day. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I made it to semifinals, I got cut, and I was devastated. I was sad, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I've been training for this the entire year, and now it's over, and I don't really know what to do. Um, so I let myself feel my feelings. I, I stayed inside. I had gotten a hotel for a couple more days because I was planning on making it to finals. But so I stayed in my hotel and I kind of sulked and just like was really in my feelings about it. And I think that is totally okay. Um, it, again, it was such an awesome experience and that's something that I don't ever want to take away from it. And it's also now part of my story. This is part of the reason why I, I want to share this with you is because it's not all easy. It's hard to, you know, it, it's not all easy to make your dreams come true. So this is definitely something that was challenging for me, but in the end it all worked out. So I came back home to Baltimore um, and I decided like 48 hours after I was so sad that I was going to audition for, I was, I was already planning auditioning for the Wizards, but I was like, okay, let's do this. I am gung ho. I'm not sad anymore. I'm now totally focused on the Wizards. I went to one prep class that was before the Brooklyn Nuts auditions 
I went to a one prep class. I loved the atmosphere. I loved Coach Derek. I thought he was hilarious. Um, I was like really excited and thinking after the clinic, I was like, yeah, I can do this. I like the vibe of the team. It feels really good being here and I, I totally think I can do it. So, um, I'm just like smiling thinking about it. So I had about a month, I believe, to train for the Wizards. I think it was a month after the Nets auditions. So I continued to, I worked at a dance studio at the time. It was like part office, part dance studio, which is cool. So I would go in there and I would practice my technique after office hours. I would practice my freestyle, which is huge um, for pro dance auditions and make sure that I, I, was, I was still new to the Baltimore area. So I didn't really know where to take classes at that time. I'd only been living there for about a month and a month maybe a couple weeks, I don't know. So I wasn't taking classes, but I made sure that I was um, like practicing choreography basically. But I was also auditioning, so I mean, I was learning dances. Anyway, um, okay, let's let's move the story along. I remember, and I was working out, I was working out, a gym, working out at a gym in um, Fed Hill, which is um, one of the neighborhoods in Baltimore, and I was running outside to the Under Armour, HQ and I just remember um, listening to the song shower you let me up inside like on the fourth <laughs> like the fourth of July no it's song shower by Becky I can't remember her last name I just remember um, like running to it and really just visualizing myself in the wizard's uniform and visualizing myself at the audition and I got a new uh, new outfit because they were a little more showy and a little more glam and they wanted um, more sparkles. So it was definitely a different vibe and something that I had to figure out and do my research on again. And I was like, this is my last chance to make a dance team this year, like, let's do it. So I went in and Wizards auditions were the, the most fun auditions that I had been to by far. Everybody was, it was a really big audition that year too, um, back in 2014. Um, everyone was cheering each other on. There was freestyling parts. Their um, coach Derek was like snapping and like throwing his pen if he liked you. It was just so animated and so enthusiastic and welcoming that I, I could feel, it was a totally different experience. Like I felt myself relax and be a little bit more at ease and be able to be confident in myself. I also think I put that pressure on myself like this is my last chance. Like I'm really going to go for it and do everything that I possibly can and get my mind right and and focus on doing the best that I can. But also by that time, I had two auditions under my belt. I the audition nerves were already out. I always recommend to my girls to take as many, to do as many auditions as possible. Um, so the, the nerves were already out and I was just really able to shine and step into my element. And there is no coincidence that I was able to have a successful audition that year for the Wizards. So um, I came in, there were three rounds that day. So, and I think you can watch, they have like Making of Wizard Girls 2014. You can look that up on YouTube. And that was my first year. That was the audition process that year. Um, so you had, we had open auditions where any, anyone can come, everyone can sign up if, as long as you meet the, like the require age requirements and stuff. Um, you have freestyle, you had the hip hop round and you have the jazz round. It was a long, 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 long day. I think it was eight to nine hours. I was not prepared. I didn't, I brought one water bottle. I brought like a bag of almonds and that was it. I was starving and tired by the time it was over. But this is like, I, I feel like the Wizards auditions, I don't know if it was because I, um, you know, I just didn't realize how much of a difference the, um, from going from college auditions to pro dance team auditions that there were. So there were girls who had like their entire makeup bag and like mirrors and had their hair. Um, they would curl their hair in between rounds and I was just like blown away. I was just there to dance. So that's something that I definitely learned from that audition that I was like, oh, I should probably do this. Um, a couple of other things that 
I didn't know, but just showed up to shine anyway. Um, the wizards wear tights whenever they wear shorts. I didn't know that, so I didn't have tights on. Again, do your research. Clearly, I didn't do it enough. Um, so I had to go out that the previous or the next week and get tights. Um, just little things like that. So made it through open auditions, made it to training camp. Training camp was three weeks that year and you practice with the vets and we uh, were practicing for a showcase um, that you are announced at the finals for if you make the team. So we learned a couple extra dances and then we also reviewed the open call dances. This was a really long and grueling process because it was three weeks. That's a long time. It's not that long anymore. It's only like five days. Um, but you are basically training with the team like you are on the team. So it's like you get a taste of it, but if you don't make it, then unfortunately you don't make it. So it was definitely a long, 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 like, time to be auditioning um during that time i learned where to get the proper tights so at the time you could buy them at hooters they're like the suntan tights or you can order them online on amazon i had to get the boots we wore the boots at the time wear my hair a certain way um you still had to like look good the whole time and keep your glam um so definitely bringing a sweat towel and it um it was one of the coolest experiences because one i was new to the area too so this is the area that i lived in i lived in baltimore dc is about an hour away and i really got to make friends and bond during the three weeks but um like i said it was it was definitely a long time so um fast forward to making the team we have the showcase there was a round where you had to introduce yourself um, there was the opening round and there were then there was jazz and hip hop rounds. So you went on stage, you performed all of those. The show is so fun and goes by so fast. And then you are announced at the end. It was so cool because one vet was called to start off and then I was the first rookie called. So it felt like literally like a wave of relief and my dreams coming true and excitement and just like this wave of happiness come over me all at one time um and it, it really felt like all the hard work that I put in that previous year and visualizing and doing research and dancing and eating right and working out and learning the whole thing and going to all the auditions and traveling and spending all that money really like paid off for that so I know that was a lot um hopefully that helps illustrate a little bit more about how my well first of all my experience um, and then if you have any questions or there's something that you would like to, for me to go over or make a separate video on, I would love for you to leave a comment below and, or ask a question in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. So that is my journey to become an MBA dancer. Um, I'll let you in in a, a little, uh, secret, I guess it's not a secret. I would, I stayed on the Wizards Dancers team for six years, so from 2014 to 2021. I danced four years on the Wizard as a Wizard Girl, so we were a all-female squad for, uh, for four years while I was on the team, and then after that, starting in 2018, um, the Wizards transitioned to a co-ed squad. So we went from all-female to co-ed, and I was on the Wizards dancers for two years, so a total of six years. Um, and I will go into my experience on the team more in a different video so if there's anything you'd like to know on the team please let me know type it in the comments um, and I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit more about my story and how I got to become an MBA dancer if you are training to become an MBA dancer or have gone through these auditions um, I'd love to talk to you on a deeper level please follow me on Instagram at Miss Christy girl send me a DM connect with me and then I also do training virtually with my program Powerhouse Pro or privates virtually. So I can definitely help you. Let's make your dreams come true. Thank you so much for listening.